Greetings. My name is Kevin Reddick, and I welcome you to Conversations from the Hot Box. <clears throat> Conversations from the Hot Box are topics, conversations, issues, myself and others of various ages, races, and uh, backgrounds engaged in while in the sauna at the gym. Uh, my sharing is from a biblical Christian perspective for your consideration. And now if that offends you, please, by all means, don't, don't listen. Uh, because the goal is not to offend or argue, but to communicate thoughts for your consideration and healthy, respectful debate. Today's conversation addresses accusations and social media. As, as, as we brought up in, in the saga, you know, you, you can't log on to any social media platform and not find some politician, preacher, athlete, film or music artist uh, being accused, found guilty and sentenced to punishment with no presentation of any real proof. The rule of the court of social media is guilty until proven innocent. And this is a danger to the stability of any society. Yet it goes unchecked by the platform administrators and owners. By engineering, social media algorithms strive to keep users engaged as long as possible, extending the amount of advertising they view. To do this, platform provide user content with which they're most likely to interact with using a multitude of criteria such as whether individuals clicked on like or commented on similar stories or how uh, uh, similar users reacted to posts on the same topic or how a user's network interacts with comparable content. Two features common across platforms work to amplify the influence of misinformation among users. First are algorithms. Uh, they, 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 they use engagement with the post to include similar content in another feed. Uh, for example, users who comment or click on flat earth misinformation will see more of it in their feeds. Repetition of an untruth makes it seem more believable. It's strange, but 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 when you see something over and over again, the repetition makes it look like a fact. Now, both aspects of social media reinforce misinformation, eventually leading to a user to believe it. Once users accept a false claim as truth, it's inevitable that some of them will act on that misbelief. And uh, unsurprisingly, you know, misinformation decisions often result in detrimental actions. And this is the danger and the real consequence of what comes to be known as fake news. I say it's dangerous because the single most effective way to take a leader down is to discredit and or disqualify him or her. To discredit someone's message, all you need to do is simply accuse them of something that will lead to disqualifying them or weaken their influence. Over and over, scripture predicts and promises that in this world, we Christians will encounter persecution simply for being a believer. And it is incumbent on us to uh, categorically understand and discern these coming accusations. You know, the, the word for Satan in Hebrew means accuser. So we should not be surprised when those he uses, accuses those of us who are believers. There is a huge stigma attached to being falsely accused of an offense. And this can have a, a far reaching effects um, to the individual. Uh, there are things that come down the line when one is falsely accused that has a snowball effect and, and, and really cause us to lose uh, perspective of what's really happening. 
even if the uh, allegations do not lead to criminal charges or sanctions, the effects of being wrongly accused can be devastating. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure anything leaves a deeper wound than being falsely accused and having others believe it. Often when being slandered, you feel like there's nowhere to go and defending yourself makes you appear guilty. Not saying anything likewise make you seem guilty. The bottom line is that being slandered or maligned will eat away at your soul if left unchecked. False accusations are related to false teachings. Uh, false accusations occur when an individual accuses another of having committed an offense when they have not done so. Often the biggest hurdle to overcome in these situations is that it tends to be one person's word against another. With, with, with rarely are there any witnesses uh, collaborating either position. And with social media, false accusations can be posted and circulated widely to multiple recipients with, with relative ease. Social media posts often have a snowball effect with, with, with the potential to reach millions of people in a matter of seconds. The new uh, sociological trend of our age is to leverage the victim crazed culture against its alleged oppressors. What does that mean? That means false accusations uh, 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 are used now by those who like to uh, present themselves as being victims of alleged oppressors, uh, whether it's true or not. <laughs> So, because you see, false accusations both label and classify people as if they owe a debt for something they never did. This is such a difficult uh, situation to face. And most people, including myself, would have a struggle as to how to respond to it. Because there's a fine line between a false accusation and real accountability. False accusations are evil. Now, when someone points to something in your life that you need to change, uh, though this may be awkward, though it may be difficult, though it may be painful even, it is for your own good. And that's a positive. But false accusations are never good and they are meant to put you on the defensive. So what, what's the solution to being falsely accused? How, how do you keep yourself from being drawn into someone's negative space? That's a difficult question to answer. In the context of ministry, experiencing offenses, criticism and false accusations has the potential of leading us to, to great discouragement or to increase maturity in our lives. We must understand, we must understand, excuse me, and discern the fact that if we are in ministry or any kind of public office, offenses, criticisms, and false accusations will come. In, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Pacific instructions are given to the Israelites about how to handle false accusations. In Deuteronomy, I uh, believe it's 19, uh, Deuteronomy 19, 18 and 19, it says, the judges shall inquire diligently, and if the witness is a false witness and has accused his brother falsely, then you shall do to him as he has meant to do to his brother. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. And Jesus actually said that we are blessed when this happens. Uh, 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 excuse me. We are blessed when this happens for his sake, when we are falsely accused for his sake. And, and he tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, he tells us, 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. See, it's, it's not up to us to avenge ourselves according to Romans 12, 19. We should seek wisdom from the word of God so that in all circumstances we may honor and bring glory to God. Now, we can break down false accusers into two separate categories, intentional and unintentional. An intentional false accuser is someone who knowingly accuses an innocent person of a wrongdoing. In some situations, the accuser is merely narcissistic, willing to destroy someone's life for the sake of attention. And typically, this accuser is a compulsive liar, and their narcissism stems from a mental disorder. In other circumstances, the accuser creates a story to avoid having to deal with the ramifications of their own wrongdoing. And therefore, this accuser is motivated by self-preservation and fear. In a study entitled, Anger Damns the Innocent, researchers from Harvard Business School and the University of Toronto conducted several studies to determine how people react when being falsely accused and how those reactions affect others' perception of their guilt or innocence. People who are falsely accused tend to get angry, which to me makes sense, but it also makes others believe that they are indeed guilty. A scenario involving an unintentional false accuser is psychologically complex. And in some scenarios, an unintentional false accuser is wrong, but can't remember who wronged them. Later, another person's smile, their voice, their dress, their mannerisms can trigger a flashback, causing the wronged individual to erroneously accuse the person who triggered the flashback, leading to a false accusation. False accusations can be incredibly complicated. Whenever you see uh, uh, groups of people in a family, business, or church speaking against others in secret without giving the accused a chance to give their perspective, you know that the spirit of accusation and division is at work. Conversely, whenever you see a person who weakens gossip and slander by bringing things to light, by bringing things to the attention of the one being accused, that person is operating under the spirit of intercession. For the Lord to vindicate us when unfairly accused, we need to respond a certain way. And the following are a few things we should do according to scripture, when, when unfairly accused. One, first of all, is we need to pray for our enemies. When other people falsely accuse you, the important thing to do is pray for them. And this is important because it protects your heart by giving you God's perspective and love for them. And this stops anger and hatred from forming inside of you like a cancer according to Matthew 5, 44. Second, hold no bitterness in your heart. God commands us not to allow a root of bitterness to spring up in our hearts since it will defile many, according to Hebrews 12 and 15. For example, uh, uh, I have often seen or heard about people who get filled with bitterness because they had to be transitioned or, or, or that's a nice way of fired or removed from a job or a ministry. And then the next thing you know, they leave the church or they leave the job and promote a false accusatory narrative that spreads among their friends and family, maligning the church, the job, and the leadership. The third thing is understand that vindication comes from God. Ultimately, 
ultimately in every situation where false narratives and accusations have caused divisions within a church, a family, or entity, the truth will manifest on behalf of the servants of God. In Isaiah 57, uh, 17, God promises his servants that their vindication will come from him. And sometimes God allows slander against us to test us to see what's inside of us. When we're walking in pride, we'll go on the attack and, and, and use hurtful words toward those who speak against us. Although it is within our rights to confront others, but it's our, in our right to do it as citizens of the kingdom in the right spirit. See, it's never good to, to just fling incels back. When we act like this, we elevate the conflict and give the enemy fuel for a fight. Our first response should be to humble ourselves when we are criticized or slandered and evaluate whether there's any truth we can glean from even our accusers, even if they dig it with the intent of hurting us. Remember, scripture tells us God works out everything for our good. However, in the case of a person or, or, or a group of people that is causing division within a group of people, uh, it's not always applicable to, to just address the individual that's doing it. Because uh, 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 their, their sin, their accusations is against the group, not merely against uh, you or I, or I as an individual. And consequently, in certain situations, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, told the church to, quote, mark those who cause divisions, which has to do with, 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 with bringing to the light the lies being spoken in the darkness for the sake of protecting the innocent individuals in the church. This is in Romans 6. So what motivates people to make false accusations in the first place? Well, there are many reasons someone might falsely accuse another person of a wrong. And, and according again to the Harvard study, uh, here are uh, the top 12 of which in the past I was guilty of operating in at least three of them myself. So I, I, I can testify that this is true, at least uh, for three of them for sure. But the first one, okay, is personal animosity or revenge. You know, some people may falsely accuse others out of personal animosity or a desire for revenge. The second one, which I, I was guilty of, misunderstanding or mistake. See, people may falsely accuse others simply because they have misunderstood or misinterpreted the situation. Number three, misidentification. People may falsely accuse others of crimes or wrongs due to misidentification or inaccurate information. Number four, another one I was guilty of, false memories. The research has shown that people can sometimes develop false memories or memories of events that never actually occurred. And again, I was guilty of that, particularly when in, in my uh, time of being addicted to drugs, I would accuse, accuse family members and particularly my father uh, and, and relate things that never happened to justify how I was living. But anyway, it's another story. Number five is attention seeking. Some people may falsely accuse others to seek attention or notoriety. And this may be motivated by a desire for attention from others or to appear heroic or important. Okay. Number six is fabrication. fabrication. Some people may simply make up false accusations without any real motivation or justification. People may do this for various reasons, including a desire to cause harm or create chaos. Number seven is insecurity or fear. 
Some people may falsely accuse others out of fear or insecurity. Number eight, prejudice or bias. People may falsely accuse others due to being prejudiced or biased to those individuals. Number nine is manipulation, big one. Some people may be manipulated into falsely accusing others by others who have an alternative motive. For example, someone might be pressured or threatened into falsely accusing someone else to protect someone else or to further someone's agenda, okay? Number 10, another one I was guilty of, and it's called confabulation. Confabulation is a phenomenon in which people fill in gaps in their memory with false information, often without realizing it. And this can lead to people falsely accusing others of wrongs they did not commit. Functioning in this can really hurt individuals. And like I said, in my addiction, I was guilty of that. Number 11, malicious intent. Some people may falsely accuse others out of pure malicious intent to cause harm or cause problems for the accused person. And finally, number 12, scapegoating. Some people may falsely accuse others to deflect blame or responsibility onto someone else. It is it's natural for people to want to believe that the world is a fair and just place and that people who are accused of crimes are actually guilty. And this may lead people to automatically assume that someone is guilty simply because they have been accused. For example, uh, people may assume that someone is guilty if they have only heard one side of the story or have been exposed to bias or incomplete information. This can lead to a lack of understanding of the full context of the situation and a tendency to jump to conclusions. Also, people may be more likely to believe that someone is guilty if the accusation fits their uh, uh, pre-existing beliefs or biases of that individual. And this is known as confirmation bias, and it can lead people to overlook evidence that might suggest that the accused person is actually innocent. And finally, some people may need to understand the legal process fully and, and may not uh, realize that an accusation does not necessarily mean that someone is guilty. And this can lead to a tendency to automatically assume that someone is guilty simply because they've been accused. Uh, what say you? What say you? You know, my, my time is up. I, I want to thank you for spending some of your uh, time with me. Please take a second to like this post and subscribe to this channel. And again, I thank you for your time. God bless.